Hey, and welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today is what? March 2nd, 2023, and we're continuing to work on our Voron 2.4 R2 Ultimate Build. <clears throat> Last time we kind of vested off of the Voron manual and worked in the LDO manual, and today is gonna be a lot of the same. I'm gonna take some aspects of the LDO manual and some aspects of the actual Voron manual, build manual, <clears throat> and bring them together and mash them together and see if we can make something that I think is a little bit better than either one. Meanwhile, I'm gonna show you what I'm watching right now. This is my buddy, my friend, my man, Golden Jaguar. Golden Jaguar, whoa, whoa, somebody's actually made a message on here. So I told you I was watching. Uh, looks like I should watch uh, electronics prep video for me. Always a mess and headless, uh, headless throwing and stuff until the printer is done. And we will not talk about the cables. If you're watching this video, then you are watching it. So just want to give a shout out there to my man, Golden Jaguar. Awesome video, does everything 100% live. Kind of like I do, I record it, I don't cut it, I don't edit it. He does it 100% live with chat. I cannot chat while I do my videos. So um, no further ado, let's jump into this one. So first things first, <clears throat> I want to talk about the Voron manual. And the reason I want to talk about the Voron manual, and I'm, I'm paying attention to you, I'm just getting over here and set up another screen here so we can have the LDO manual up as well. Um, Wagos. If you don't know what a Wago is, this be a Wago. Wago, Wego, Wigo. Oh, and screws are falling out all over the place. Uh, let's see, I'll give you a little bit closer screen uh, to do. So Wagos are these neat little things that allow you to connect wires, uh, and they have a clamping force on them and they're reusable. <clears throat> so these can be used, um, of course, depending on code where you are, but these are used with AC power quite frequently. They can be used with DC power. Uh, they work really nicely. You don't have to twist wires together. You don't have to do any crimping or anything like that, and they hold really well. The sides of a Wago will tell you what type of wire and what size of wire and how many wires and what the uh, total, uh, I think it's the ampacity that it shows here, how many amps it will take. Uh, if my eyes would work a little bit better, but uh, once you get over about 43 or so, that kind of goes south real quick. So let's get back to the PDF real quick, and we'll look right here. <clears throat> and those are the way it goes, and this is where they're mounting it, and we're gonna do that on the printer. Um, and the reason I wanted to show you this is, I'm gonna go now over to the LDO manual, which I think this will do it. Yeah, uh, no, that's not the camera I want. Where is the one I want? I want, let's see, I want this one. Yes, okay. So we're over here in the LDO manual now, the wiring guide, and LDO kind of foregoes the way goes. I could just rhyme Wago all day now. Um, this is like fun. So we're gonna skip down on this a little bit. Right here, we're talking about the LED mounting. It's not that big of a deal. It's inside of it, that's easy. We'll get to that. That's kind of like some icing on the cake. I'm not gonna worry about too much that's actually inside the printer right now because the more things that we have up in the main part of the printer, the more things we gotta deal with as we're flopping things around and working on the underside of the printer, which is also why the bed's not on the printer yet. You'll notice in the um, Voron manual that they put the bed on the printer damn near the beginning of the thing. And honestly, that just adds another, I don't know, around about eight pounds to the printer. Um, and um, unless you're looking for some extra workout, uh, you don't need to do that. <clears throat> so let's start right here. Uh, this is our power inlet, and they're showing us neutral, neutral, uh, line, line, pre-wired, neutral and so that basically is for our, our lighted or lit switch uh, and then they have a ground on here as well ground is only going to the printer ground is not used for the lit switch uh, all these terminals when plugged in fast forward a little bit are all going to be hot okay so that metal on the back of there is going to be hot in your printer so be very quick, careful and I'll, and I'll actually take this right now and tell you <clears throat> that a good aspect of what we're doing right now is a preface to uh, working with AC power, uh, which is mains power for, for folks not in the States or in Canada. Um, <clears throat> or it's, it's still AC power, but different voltages and different terminology. Uh, but anyways, dangerous stuff, okay? So be careful. First and foremost, don't touch it, okay? Even if it's a neutral, even if it's a ground, try not to touch it. Um, unless it's unplugged and you know everything's drained out. Uh, there are some components here that can have residual power in them which means that once power is disconnected from them, they still hold the charge. 
So you're gonna wanna be careful with things. And I'll show you about that holding charge in a second. We'll get a little bit more in depth on the electronics, probably next video or two. This one, we're gonna get stuff mounted on the printer and kind of route some wires, specifically the AC wires, which is why I'm having this disclaimer right now. So be careful, don't touch anything. It's not a nine volt battery. Don't stick your tongue on it or your fingers or anything else. <clears throat> so um, do they tell us that's dangerous? No, they assume you know. AC switch right here, we already talked about in the last video, but if you didn't catch that one, first of all, you should go back and look at it. Second of all, uh, 230, uh, 110, if you don't know what voltage of AC current you have in your home, your office, or your dorm room, or uh, whatever you're in, uh, I'd pause right now, go watch some videos on YouTube. I'm not gonna list any over here or over there, but go watch some videos on YouTube about AC, um, 220 versus 110, things like that. They'll tell you all about it. Households in the United States actually are 220, 230 is roundabout numbers, it's within 5%. Uh, but we use single legs on it, which makes us a 110 country uh, until we have items that require 220, which use both legs of it. But go look at our YouTube videos. If you don't know anything about AC electricity, you should definitely have at least a little bit of information about that before you jump into this, because again, it's dangerous. Uh, let's see here. They're getting to the octopus. We'll get into that in a bit. And here is our blank canvas. And with that blank canvas, they already have mounted on here the inlet for the power and the inlet inlet outlet because it's Cat5, it's uh, networking um, for that. So I'm gonna show you what I have on my desk right here real quick. We'll do a little widescreen of that, but then I'm gonna pull the printer up and we'll actually get on to building some of this because you're probably getting bored of watching me and hearing me. Or maybe you think it's fun. Either way, let me know comments down below. Yeah, comments. So desk cam, bada boom, right? Oh, nope, that's this one. We don't want that one. We want this one, bada boom. There we go. Um, so just quick overview again of the components that we're using here. Uh, last video I did say 48 volt power supply. Uh, my day job, my, my real world job, uh, we use a lot of 48 volts. This is a 24 volt. <clears throat> Uh, half the power twice as good, right? No, that's just half the power. It doesn't make it twice as good. Uh, terminals on the front here, terminal strip. Adjustment here, okay? So be mindful of that, and you do have an LED on that. Uh, the LED will tell you, and we'll see it at some point here, that even when we disconnect power, the LED will stay lit for probably mm, five, 10, 15 seconds. And that's because there's, there's, there's still electricity built up in capacitors and other components, inducers, capacitors, inside of that you know, this, this product right here, oh, underneath my picture, I'm sorry, um, <clears throat> that will stay energized for a while. Uh, that adjustment screw there, we'll talk about that too. Basically, we wanna make sure all of our components are working properly before we start hooking up other things. So, 24 volt. Uh, this is new, I didn't have this last video, but uh, one of my happy-go-lucky uh, and um, very convincing viewers uh, convinced me that I should buy a five volt DC power inverter as well. The LDO kit currently, as of March in 2023 for the Voron 2.4 R2, a lot of words, uh, does not come with a five volt power supply, uh, which is something kind of new to me. They, they, they usually do. Um, but that being said, uh, we went ahead and got a, a, uh, a five volt power supply, and this is in the meanwhile, it matches the meanwhile we have here. Uh, that's gonna make sure that we have the cleanest, most available five volts for a Raspberry Pi. And actually there, there are a few components here that are using five volts. You know, uh, the tap uses five volts. There's uh, LEDs in here that are gonna use five volts, uh, logic circuits, things like that. And um, even the ESP32 that's gonna wind up in here to uh, tell us what the printer is doing on our home automation, which uh, if you're interested in home automation and if you're interested in how this is all gonna go together, definitely leave me a comment because I need to know how much content of any specific thing I'm going to put out there. I don't wanna bore people. I want everybody to see stuff they like. Uh, all right, so this is that. We have our SSR, a solid state relay. Uh, uh, basically what this does is um, <clears throat> turns on the bed power because it's AC power off and on uh, at a certain frequency using PWM coming off of the controller board to basically get that heat on that, that bed exactly where we want it. And once it gets there, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's at 70%, 80%, depending on how hard we push things to get it up to temperature. You know, so we want it at 100 degrees. Once it gets to 100 degrees, it's gonna take nowhere near that much power. It might just sit there at about 20% or 15%, depending on what the temperature in the air is. 
Uh, so that's what that does right there. Uh, we have our breakout board, which is new to me. I've never done a harnessed printer that requires breakout boards. I've always direct wired everything. So that's gonna be a little bit of a learning experience for me. Um, supposedly makes things easier, but sometimes the easier makes things harder for somebody that's done something a different way. So we'll have fun. Raspberry Pi, uh, if you're not familiar with a Raspberry Pi, you've probably been under a rock for a while. Uh, I'm going to guess there are more people that are unfamiliar with AC power and how it kind of functions and what the safety is on AC power than there are with Raspberry Pis. But <clears throat> I will revert back again to, let's see what our friend Golden Jaguar is up to. I will revert back again to my friend Golden Jaguar over here, uh, who is awesome at locating these guys as well as other replacements for it. So if you're having trouble sourcing a Raspberry Pi or you just don't wanna pay the obscene amounts that they want for them, I mean, this, this board should cost you probably less than $60, give or take. Um, and you can find it for 200, 230. That guy over there, that guy over there, that guy over there, uh, Golden Jaguar, professional at finding boards that will do what this will do for you for a lot less money. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that too far, but trust me on that. All right, so back to this. Raspberry Pi, da, 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 control board. We're not gonna talk much about that because that is going to be a complicated piece of kit with a lot of inputs and outputs. And that's gonna be pretty much a whole episode by itself when we do that. Uh, inputs and outputs, we have our ethernet input. We have our power, which we just looked at. We have terminal blocks right here that we're not gonna use because I don't want them. And then we got wiring harnesses that came with the kit and wiring harnesses that I built. So let's uh, let's quick look at these wiring harnesses that I built. So this kit came with uh, some wiring harnesses, but because it did not come with the five volt, uh, I had to do some manipulation of the undercarriage and how things are going on there. Uh, let's let's look at that real quick here. So uh, let me bring up this. Okay, so right here, if you look at the printer from LDO. They have the major components and they have these terminal blocks here. What we're gonna wind up doing today is we're going to wind up mounting everything pretty much in the exact same location with the exception of these terminal blocks, which will be replaced with that five volt adapter. My primary goal on placement inside of this printer is to basically keep everything that's utilizing AC voltage in one section of the printer. Uh, we'll call it the danger zone of the printer versus everything else in the printer, which is going to be running lower voltages. You know, the, the, the 24 volts, the five volt stuff to the Raspberry Pi um, and things like that. Now, of course, this AC voltage is gonna make its way to the front of the printer for the bed, but for the majority of everything, if it's back in that corner where the power comes in, that's where the AC voltage is going to be. So if you reach underneath that thing, I know to be extra super careful, uh, especially if I don't have the bottom on it, to, uh, to not uh, catch anything there. So these guys are gonna go away. Our five volt adapter or our, 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 our meanwhile five volts gonna go right here. We're gonna mount Wagos right here because we went with those awesome ACM panels we got from KV3D so we don't need these clips that are on this one. Um, and I guess, you know, why don't I bring that up now? Let's, uh, let's switch over to this thing real quick and I'll get that printer up. I'm gonna slide this stuff aside. And I don't know how I'm gonna get a good view here <clears throat> for the work but hopefully you guys bear with me. People have asked me about my editing and I just don't do it. I ain't got time for that crap. So here we go. Blank slate right there now. So we're gonna take this guy, put him up there. She does not have a name yet. If you, uh, if you want, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment. We can come up with a name. Name my printer. Name the Build It Basement printer. Sounds like fun. Uh, so let me get over to this camera real quick. <clears throat> this guy, yep. And um, up here on the top, let's move that out of the way. Up here at the top and get in the focus. It's probably gonna wanna focus on this and not here because it's a camera and it's mean. Uh, we have Wagos back here for the bed. We'll get into that eventually too. Uh, that's gonna be AC power as well. So AC power on this printer is gonna be stuck back here and right here. Uh, I'll cover it up as best as we can. So I'll flip this bad boy on its back. Mm -mm -mm. And try to get into a position where I can work and you can see, which trust me is not always the easiest thing to do. Mm. 
All right, just so people have an idea of what we're dealing with here, let me go to my wide overhead camera. So my printer is currently on its back end, which is over here. This is the back of the printer. Yep, back of the printer. This is the bottom section I'm on right now. This is the front if you had the printer stood up um, and you're on this camera and I'm not. So let's go back to the camera that I am on and I can wave and do these things. This is the bottom. These are our DIN rails that we had mounted in a previous video. Uh, again, LDO has us mount these DIN rails this way, whereas the normal Voron build would have us mount them that way. Uh, and that's part of their wiring. So first thing we want to do is we're going to install, and I've already put my T-nuts in, uh, the power inlet on this, okay? Um, power inlet's actually over here. So these parts right here, these are part of your additional parts. Um, actually, these should come with, uh, even if you do a print it forward, these are functional parts because they have the, you know, functional power inlet. These are probably some of the only parts you're going to get in a print it forward if you don't get anything other than functional parts for your skirts. Uh, but these are kind of required. And you know what else is required? Is me to flip this over even further. I destroyed my whiteboard while I'm at it. Maybe we can work like this. Finding the right angle is going to be difficult today. And I apologize for that. Now, let's see here. So first things first, we're going to be mounting this inlet box right here. And let's get that up a little bit like that. And let's go ahead and use the two screws on that. These are M3 by eights, kind of the most common screw on this printer. Push that away. Oh, screw down, grab another. We'll get that one later. I just realized I have a different logo on there. No one told me that. I rely on you guys to tell me when something's messed up. All the comments are always just so positive. I need to point out some faults, man. All right, got that. And I know my head's blocking it. It likes to do that. So I'm gonna get those nice and loose around there, but now I can slide it up to where we want to put it, which is up close to our mount for our, what would that be? That is our Z, let's see, one, a zero, one, two, Z2. Oh, wait, not where we want to be here. There you go. All right. that where we want it and then let's put uh <clears throat> let's put our ethernet jack on there because according to according to not that screen but to this screen we are putting this here and actually it is in the voron manual for this let's see if we can get to that real quick uh, they're showing us that upside down assembly power inlet they're showing where to put that which is what we just mounted um, and if you can work upside down, good for you. Uh, that's, that's awesome. The problem with upside down is it doesn't work so good if you're trying to record a video. But we'll see what we get to here. It's all about coming up with solutions for little problems. Turn every little problem to a big problem. You never get past the little ones. You don't ever get to the big ones. So let's, uh, See what we can do here. Okay, we get that nubbed on. Slide that into place now that we get them both. And then we'll give this a quick tighten. And honestly, we might wind up sliding these just a slight bit when we go to put the rest of the, um, the rest of the, uh, skirts on this thing so we don't need to get super tight on these yet there we go all right 
So, back to this dust can. Let me push this back even further. How's that working? And focus, 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 focus good, focus good. All right, so we're working right now on our power inlet right here. So this is where that is. And we're going to put our Wago mount, like prescribed, in the Voron manual, not, not the LDO manual, but the Voron manual, right here in this corner, which is another part of keeping everything in the one area that we talked about a few moments ago, if you don't recall, you know? I don't expect you to remember, but it's a thought that counts. And full screw number two. So I'm gonna skirt this a little bit over. There, it looks good to me. If we have to move this, we can. Good thing about having stuff mounted to extrusions, you can laterally move it if you need to. And these are all open. That's how they close, open, close. That's the way go. <clears throat> you go, why go, we go. All right, so let's get over to the screen share right there. And you know what? <clears throat> Let's do this for a second. This poor printer. I hate flipping it upside down. I really do. Um, is that what we're seeing? Yeah, we're seeing that. Okay, so we got our diagram over on the picture below of what uh, LDO would like us to do. Um, and primarily, <clears throat> that's what we're gonna do. So what LDO wants us to do is they want us to mount the 24 volt power supply down towards the very end here. So who might argue? Now, if you've ever built an older Voron, a non R2, and actually even before that, the mounts on these parts is night and day better. Uh, we used to have to do things to try to make them hold um, the, uh, the 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 parts to the the din rails because they just they just would not hold. So this is uh, this is nice. This is very nice. Okay, so that's on there real quick. And I wish this. You know what? I'm gonna get away from the LDO. You guys got a good picture of that down there, right? And you probably have it if you're following along, and if you're not. Oh well, you'll have a reference. Uh, so we got that there. They want us to put the um, uh, the, the 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 blocks here, the modules. Uh, what do you call those things? The things we're not using uh, right here. We're not doing that. We're gonna put our. We will follow though. We are gonna put our SSR on, uh, and on the SSR, I'm going to mount it so it says load on this side. This is where your 12, 24 to 240 volts AC lives. And this is kind of confusing. Actually, talk about that for a second. Let me, um, let me talk about that. So on the, this, this confuses a lot of people. I don't, is that gonna get in the focus? Yeah, this confuses a lot of people because of the output input thing, okay? So what you need to remember is that your input is actually your control. So it should be control input. That's where your low voltage is gonna go in from your control board to basically tell this thing when to open and close uh, the AC voltage going to your bed. Your load portion of it is actually correct. That's your load. Your bed is your load. But the problem is, is that your line into this also is not a load, it's, it's line in. Uh, so these are always a little bit confusing and that always confuses people just a little bit. So the easiest way to remember it is, is your one and two ports are your load ports and your line in port. port. So I'm going to wire my line in, my, my mains line in, AC directly out of my Wago to block number one. Two is gonna be out to the bed, okay? And then three and four are negative and positive from the control board, okay? So keep that in mind. It's always a question that comes up. And super wide screen again. All right, so this guy is going to live right about here. Okay, our five volt power adapter, because I'm trying to keep all the AC type stuff up here, is going to be right about here. Give or take a 
millimeter or so. Um, and then we have the Raspberry Pi, which is going to follow suit with uh, the LDO documentation. Uh, and that is going to actually live right about here. Okay. And then control board. Again, we'll follow the LDO documentation. I'm gonna keep these power wires where all the power is gonna be coming into this off of the 24 volt uh, is going to be right here. About the only thing that is semi questionable in my mind at least is a five volt power adapter being up in that corner because it's powering the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi is way down here. But again, I wanna keep the AC power all up in this corner. Um, if I can, I, that's what I'm doing. That's why I've chosen to do what I'm doing. Um, then we got this guy. There we go. That gives us plenty of room here. Plenty of room here. They do slide if you need to. It's a little crowded up here, but I think we can work with it. All right, so that being said, let's get back to the LDO build screen here. And let's look at what we have. Okay, so we're not gonna worry too much about the wiring of the steppers just yet. Um, you know, they tell you zero, one, two, three. Uh, that's fine and dandy at all. We're gonna focus on the AC power today. Um, I think it's important to get that done first because those are the biggest wires. Um, they're the most unruly. Plus I've made custom harnesses and I'm gonna show you those uh, and how they're going on. And then I'll give you a quick example of how those were made if you have any questions about that. And by all means, if you have additional questions or if you wanna see how to make a harness step by step, uh, I can do another video for that, but you have to leave me a comment and let me know. So wide overhead, back we go. All right, so first things first, I have our interconnect between our input jack and our Wagos back here. So colors are a little bit different between, or on these are the same, but a little bit different for the rest of us. <clears throat> These colors aren't normally what we see here in North America. Normally we see green for ground, we see a white for neutral, and a black for hot, okay? And here we see a L, an N, and a PE. This is our ground, this is our neutral, this is our hot leg. So these are called ferrules. Uh, I can show you, again, I'm gonna show you that real quickly. These are ferrules so that we put them in here, we don't have dangling wires. These are slide connectors. These are pretty basic. You've probably seen these before. Ferrules might be new to you. Um, first things first is ground. It's the only lug on this, this unit that doesn't have anything on it. So we're gonna go into that. Uh, one thing about these, these might be a little bit tight. They might be too tight. Uh, you can pry them a little bit. I don't suggest you do too much because you want them to fit very snugly. Uh, not so snugly though that you break stuff. So we're gonna get that one on. We're going to attempt. Yep, we got that one on, and then we're gonna get this one on. And basically we're going in the same color orientation of what's above it. So if you have blue, you're going blue. If you have this, this is another thing that's kind of odd. They have brown here, but mine's more of a red. Uh, I think it's supposed to be brown, but it's more of a red on, on this. And this is actually a, modifi a modification of their harness. So know much to say about that. Uh, but anyways, and then, then we have our ground. So over here in the way goes, we got to do the same thing. So I'm going to do our ground first. I'm going to use the first port here. And then I'm going to clamp that in. Okay. I'm going to do our neutral next in our first port. And then I'm going to do our hot lead here in our first port. Okay. I'm going to tuck that kind of over here for now. We'll do some manipulation of this wiring in a little bit uh, or in another video, but that's what we have. Now, one thing I do want to note on these Wagos that you may not know and you'll soon realize is that these are all connected, okay? This is all one joint connection across all of these, okay? This is one joint connection, that's one joint connection, that's one joint connection. They're all they're all connected together. That's, that's basically you're bonding all these wires together, three separate bonds um, to allow for our ground, our neutral, and our hot wire, okay? So next thing we got, we have our bed wiring. So our bed wiring, I'm gonna take this off real quick. That unclips off the side. Uh, this is a custom harness. 
And this harness right here has our ferrules on this end to go into our Wagos. And then we have a broken pot on this. I'm gonna call it broken, it's two flying leads. And that two flying leads is, are to connect to our uh, SSR that we have right here, followed by a longer wire with again, more ferrules to go to the front side. So what we're gonna wind up doing with this is basically doing our ground, like so, our neutral, like so, whoop, like so, and our hot. And from now on, any of the harnesses I make, um, not from now on as in now in my life, it just anything you see now is going to have this color scheme, which is black for hot, green for ground, white for neutral, okay? So uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have two coming off here and we're going to basically go into our load and our power into this SSR. And I cannot see the screw holes on this. So this might be funny for you. Not funny for me, but funny for you. So just because of neatness, I am going to mount the power coming into this SSR. And this does not matter, but just, you know, credit for neatness. Uh, the one pin or screw terminal is going to be my power coming in and two is going to be power going out. So let me screw those down real quick. And don't expect any of these mounts, your DIN mounts to completely hold everything. You, you're gonna wanna hold things a little bit, not, not ex, you know, don't put too much pressure on these things. And, and for the whole thing, you know, you don't want to really crank down these wires. You want to make them tight, but don't break anything. I mean, it, it's wires. It's, it's not mechanical. I mean, mechanical bonds, but not mechanically doing much, okay? So I'm passing that down through this hole right here. This is our pass through to the bed. I'm going to actually put more than I need. I know I get that a little long, but there right there is our AC power to the bed, okay? So next thing we have... I think I'm missing one or I need to make another one. Nope, it's right here. Okay, good. Um, I have our AC power again with ferrules and terminals on the far end uh, to go to my 24 volt. And I've made these a little bit long. I think I think we can still neaten them up and keep them neat. But uh, if they're not a little long, if you want to work on something, and I guess that's a pro tip, air quote pro tip, is uh, yeah, you can make everything exactly to the right length. But when you go to work on it, you're going to have to unplug everything every single time, which isn't fun. Maybe it is fun. I don't, I don't know what time you got, but all right. So there we have that. So, and my thought on this is it's kind of gonna be like that. And then <clears throat> call that a service loop, if you will. We got our ground going in first and hopefully I might have to finagle things a little bit here, but nope, we got them in. Uh, we'll get a ground, okay? And then we have our neutral. There we go. And then we have our, our hot or our line or leg. I don't know if the L on these stands for line or leg. I'm gonna say line. Um, but again, the states here, we have two legs. So there you go. Uh, so that's that. That's AC into the 24 volt adapter and stop trying to focus and unfocus. People don't like that. All right. So last but not least on AC, other than the bed, and we'll flip this over in a moment and, and uh, get into that. Let's throw this on real quick. Is our five volt adapter. And I completely can't see anything going on with that. So if, uh, if you want to take a snippet of video, it's probably going to be funny watching me try to screw that in. So stand by. Fun stuff to come. Hopefully no sparks and smoke. So there we go. Uh, and just another note too on these Wagos, if they're up like this, they're not open. Okay, these are still holding tight. You actually have to ration them up. This is kind of just a movement that they have on them. Um, we'll call it play if you want, but they're not open. They, they need to be all the way open to be open and they close tight when they do, they snap down on you. But I could lift up the printer with this uh, if I thought that uh, the plastic would hold. 
I'm gonna move this a little bit because as much as I want you guys to laugh at me, I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess this up. So um, do not adjust your television. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna pull this front panel off of that. And my good friend Woody has made a cover for this, uh, which is kind of neat. I don't recall exactly what it looks like. Maybe Woody put my logo on it. He didn't, he should have. Talking to you, Woody. Um, but I got a cover for this too that's gonna go on eventually. Uh, thank you, Woody, for that. So here we're gonna need our ground. And you know what? You know what? Let's go the extra mile. Half mile, whatever it is. It needs to come off hard. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wire this from the underside because I think it'll look nicer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin this a little bit. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna poke these up through as opposed to down through. So let's get that. We'll try to hold that pretty straight. This also has an adjustment screw on it too. A uh, little note in case I forget to mention in the future. When you go into that, and I do suggest you hook up a multimeter to this stuff again, we'll say that again, um, to see what your voltages are. I, I try to aim actually for slightly higher than the voltage you want to end up with. And the reason I do that is because there will be losses. They won't be great, but there'll be little losses. And there are tolerances within everything. And most electronics are happier, believe it or not, slightly over voltaged than they are under voltaged. Brownouts are what kill a lot of electronics. Um, so for instance, on this five volt adapter, uh, we're gonna want it probably, I'll, I'll literally probably put it up to about five and a quarter, maybe as high as five and a half, not higher than that, but um, I definitely want it to be at least five. So we'll do that and give it a little, Service loop again on that one, right? And then snap that into place. There we go. And just for good housekeeping, we'll put this back on. All right. So let's go ahead and flip this bad boy on its proper end again. And look at that bed wiring. <laughs> Oh, that's what you want to do. You want to slash around a um, roughly thousand dollar printer. That's, that's, that's the way you do things. All right, so let's move this guy aside. Uh, let's go back to that guy. Is that gonna work? I think it's gonna work. Nice to see you again, yeah? And this is an awesome mod. I don't know how much I've talked about this, but this is uh, another, I think it was Rama. Um, this is all magnetic. This is neat as hell. Uh, it gets screwed in here, but everything else is magnetic. And as soon as I get this semi-wired up, we'll look at that. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my ground first again. I'm gonna follow that with my neutral again. I like to go ground, neutral, hot. Some people like to go um, neutral, ground, hot. Um, but this is like an order of operations to me. Um, to me, neutral is probably the, uh, the common in between the ground and the, um, the hot. Uh, neutral shouldn't be doing much unless something goes wrong. I mean, uh, hot, uh, ground shouldn't be doing much unless something goes wrong. Uh, so anyways, that goes on like that. Then what's gonna happen here specifically is we have our connections here. Our, bed's gonna connect, our bed heater's gonna connect here our our, our, uh, between our thermistor and, uh, not thermistor, our thermal fuse and this, we're going to utilize that block. So basically one output of this is going to go into our thermal fuse. The other side of it's going to come back out. Uh, then we have one for our two ports on our thermistor. So when we wanna remove this bed, we can basically disconnect these uh, six Wagos and just yard it right out, no problem at all. It's gonna make it easy because um, you never know when you need to take the bed out, which I don't do often, but this is the ultimate build, so maybe you will. Um, so anyways, magnets, amazing magnets, right? So 
that goes there. That's magnet held on. Pretty damn nifty. Um, and that will actually serve as a way to hold wiring and protect you. And then you have the secondary piece that goes on top of that, which covers up the way goes and everything. It leaves room for your uh, chain if you uh, are doing chain and none I guess. Um, well, and then you get your, your your purge bucket here with your with your brush. And again, this is all magnet. So when you want to clean it out, you just bada boom, bada bing. Take it out, change your brush, clean out your purge bucket. Everything's golden, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's awesome. So with that. That is quickly the start of this. This is our AC wiring. I don't want to make this video too long. We're up to about 40 minutes is where I like to keep things. So I know I'm not moving through this as quickly as some people would like to see, but um, you know, your patience will be rewarded with this wonderful printer that again, leave a comment if you want to try help naming it. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Any comments you leave, I do respond to. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment, hit a like, uh, subscribe if you hasn't subscribed yet. And there's a backlog of videos for this build as well as some other builds. Um, I have a Patreon if you're interested in that. I think it goes from $3 on up to a bunch of other different things. If you think I'm worth something, go ahead and drop me some coin in that as well. Um, I will see you next time and we will continue to work on the wiring on this thing. And this Saturday, if you are watching this all the way through to the end, we have a live stream, kind of a live party, a BYOT, a bring your own topic. Uh, so that's going to be, today's the second, so what's that going to be on the 4th? So 4th, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, we're going to have our little party. And um, if you are available and you want to join, I hope you do, and I will see you then.